So, I mean, they still have a very tough schedule ahead of them, Fleetwood. So there is some, there are some positives. The full-time whistle has sounded, and thank freaking God, I, I just, I, I low-key wanted to turn my game off after the Bakayoko goal, the fourth goal. But um, Bolton just spreading the love a little bit with uh, four different goal scorers, but Varson, Afalayan, Charles, and Bakayoko. What can I say, but Bolton played an absolutely flawless game. I mean, that second goal was just was a just a microcosm of how the game actually went. Because, um, yeah, it was Paul Osu winning the header. Alpha Lion picks it up, takes a couple touches towards the center, plays it to uh, Dion Charles, who holds the ball up ahead of Callum Bailly, just flicks it under the bottom of his heel, and then immediately first-time ball back to Alpha Lion, who sprinted over after he played him. And then Afalayan just quick first touch around Zanov. And, um, you know, that was, that was a really good goal from Bolton. And then a couple of other instances where they just knocked it around really well with pace. We tried the high press as we usually do every game, but they just kept pl playing rings around us. They switched it over to Fossey on several occasions. Lee Brown was... <coughs> just... With a player of, of his experience, you'd think Lee Brown, you know, he got beat over the top on several occasions, you know, caught too central on a lot of the times. You'd think that, you know, Lee Brown would position himself a little bit wide, right? Because Fossey, they like to play it out to him, but they played it out to him at freaking will. And then Fossey, when they he did take uh, Lee Brown on 1v1, he was just too quick for Brown. Brown, you know, he's... He's six foot two, I think six foot three, not super agile. You know, he's a good he's a good defender all around, but he also just had a, a very woeful game today. Uh, there was one instance in which there was a goal kick played by Zanev. There was a header won by one of the center backs from Bolton, and it took Lee Brown maybe like two or three seconds to realize that there was somebody goal side of him, like three, four yards away, and he's like, "Oh shit, I gotta get back," and they ended up switching it over to uh, Dion Charles, who had so much time, he ended up just chesting it down and then taking it to his left foot, driving the shot towards goal. It went wide in that instance. I think it was 1-0 Bolton. This was a few minutes before the Alpha Lion goal. But Lee Brown, 2 out of 10 performance today. Uh, Hannigan, I didn't think played very well either. Uh, Dion Charles was able to hold the ball up on several occasions ahead of Hennigan. I thought Hennigan uh, could have been a little bit more physically imposing. And I, I don't think that we saw the the Ben Hennigan that we like to see today. And um, I think Chislett was, was eh. I mean, on the ball at times, he played a couple of decent passes in the first half, but then just kind of fell off the face of the earth. Um, he got a, a through ball played in. This could have changed. This chance right here could have changed the entire complexion of the game. I'm not saying they would have won, but it could have changed the complexion, could have changed the uh, the outlook of the game. It was a through ball played by Osu. Osu fair play. It was one of our. It was one of our bright spots. Paul Osu received it on the right hand side. Took a couple touches towards the center as he usually does. He likes to do that with pace. And then he found a huge hole between Santos and I think that was uh, Johnston on that right hand side. He played Ethan Chisla. Good run from Chislet, but he tried to take a touch Chislet with the outside of his boot, and it went kind of underneath his his foot a little bit. And um, you know, had he gotten that touch towards goal, he would have been 1v1 with the keeper. And unfortunately, Ethan Chislett, you know, I've given him plenty of props over the last four games or so where he's been pretty good on the ball, you know, knows where he wants to take it uh, before he receives the ball and decent shot. That time, watched Chislett with the outside of his boot and it went kind of underneath his, his foot a little bit. And, um, you know, had he gotten that touch towards goal, he would have been 1v1 with the keeper. And unfortunately, he usually does. He likes to do that with pace. And then he found a huge hole between Santos and I think that was uh, Johnston on that right-hand side. He played Ethan Chislett. Good run from Chislett, but he tried to take a touch Chislett with the outside of his boot, and it went kind of underneath his, his foot a little bit. And, um, you know, had he gotten that touch towards goal, he would have been 1v1 with the keeper. And unfortunately, Ethan Chislett, you know, I've given him plenty of props over the last four games or so where he's been pretty good on the ball, you know, knows where he wants to take it uh, before he receives the ball and decent shot. That time, just just let it, let it, just let it go. 
let it through the, the grasp. And uh, after that, it was just all bolts, and they scored a couple minutes later. And then um, that, that first goal, it was Ben Hennigan, by the way, who I said wasn't didn't really have his best game. He lost uh, uh, the Icelandic striker. I forgot his name. He lost his mark as he was able to just nod it towards the back post. And then the third goal... Oh yeah, it was it was kind of unfortunate as um, the Icelandic striker tried to make a sliding challenge and Ben Hennigan tried to stick his foot out to try to intercept the ball that was going down the middle and then bounced off his foot and took the sting off the pass. Dion Charles, 1v1 with the keeper, boom. It could have been 5. Honestly, this game could have been 5 nil. As uh, they had a couple of other opportunities, like across to Bakayoko that... Uh, that um, Ben Hennigan barely was able to get a flick on. Another cross to Bakayoko that um, Lee Brown on, on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side, or the right-hand side, the cross was played in. Lee Brown tried to back heel it to try to stop. It, it like redirected to Bakayoko, top of the six, try to get a header and somehow went over the bar. But um, could have been five, could have been six. Probably the worst performance this season uh, aside from the Bolton game. I didn't see it. So I can't tell you guys for 100% certainty whether that one was a, a worse performance, but this one was the worst that I've seen this season. Arguably the worst performance under Mark Robinson. And um, I cannot say Robbo out yet because, to be fair, we were really depleted. Extremely. No Maka, no Asal, no Woodyard, no Hardigan. And uh, it really showed. It really did show as uh, we were not able to string to get... Uh, we were not able to string passes together very often. And uh, we had a hard time dealing with the high press of Bolton. I think that uh, Nessa Guinness Walker, though, I have to say I was impressed with him. Him and Osu were our best players today. I think Nessa Guinness Walker looked in his element. I think uh, his first touch was good. You know, he, he dealt with the uh, press off the ball pretty well. Had a couple of good passes. One of them was like a back flick pass over to uh, Lee Brown, who was making an overlapping run. It just looked so calm on the ball. Nessa Guinness walk on that instance. In another instance, he uh, was making a run down the left. He let the ball uh, roll past his body and then uh, received a return. He, he didn't actually receive the ball right away. He, um, he saw that Mabude was going to receive the ball first and spun out and tried to receive the ball from Mabude, and he did. He put the cross in. Uh, on that instance, Trafford, the goalkeeper, actually missed the punch. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Tomas wasn't there to uh, receive it. it. It went behind Tomas as he went to make a run. It went behind him, and he had to chase it back. And then he um, tried to, and he played it back to the center, and then the the, the play was reset. That was, uh, you know, they had a couple opportunities. AFC Wimbledon in the first five minutes of the second half. One of them being from uh, from that cross. Obviously, chisel it in the first half with that missed opportunity to try to get in behind towards goal. Uh, and then there was another instance where, um, I forget, I forget. It was it was another half chance that happened a few minutes before that. But other than that, those three opportunities were the only chances of the game from AFC Wimbledon. Only. And if you look at the stats, 17 shots, four on target from Bolton. All four shots on target ended up uh, into the back of the net. Six shots, one on target for AFC Wimbledon, 40% possession. Um... When you look at the stats alone, it doesn't look like a completely dominating performance. But, I mean, considering that the only shot on target from AFC Wimbledon was, I believe, um, maybe a shot from distance, maybe, from Paul Osu, or a shot from distance from, uh, I don't know, from Mabude that got blocked or something. Trafford didn't have to do anything. He just, you know, sitting in his goal, going... Going by the by the post, grabbing his cup of tea, taking a sip. He didn't have to do anything. It's poor all around, defensively, offensively. And it's something to just throw in the fire. Let it burn. On to the next one. Jilling him away. Winnable game. I won't be able to watch that one. Like I said, I will be on the plane to London. 30 minutes removed from, from the time that the plane actually takes off. So... All right, it is that time of the video where I cover some opinions that the fans may have. I'm sure there was going to be, if, if there weren't division before about whether Mark Robinson is the right man for the job in the long term, there certainly will be now, especially after a game like that. Now, before I get into any comments, uh, I 
M my opinion, because I tend to sway my opinion a little bit based off of what other people say. So I just want to let you guys know right now, just for just so that you guys can quote me on all of these uh, things I'm about to say. I don't think Rob. I still don't think Robo out is the right outcry right now. But, but there's a caveat. He's close to the Robo. For me, he's one or two games away from where I believe Robo out is going to start to have some substance. If let's say they lose against Gillingham, maybe they they won't have a Sal. Uh, they're gonna have McCormick back from suspension. Ideally, they would have uh, Woodyard back. I don't know about Radoni. I'd say the Doncaster game is going to be the most important game of the season. Thank God I'm actually going to that one. If they don't win against Doncaster with Maka back, with the Sal back, with probably Woodyard, probably Radoni, probably Har all five of those players, Hardigan, they're probably all going to be back. If they don't win that game, there's going to be some problems. And I think, I don't think, regardless though, I don't think we should sack Mark Robinson this season at all because who would want to step up to the plate this late in the season who are we going to find this late in the season gerard <laughs> no um freaking nuno spirito santo no it's probably going to be some like league two quality manager maybe low end league one and i don't think they're going to get us out of this hole this quickly so i think we stick with mark robinson for the rest of the season and then if if we get if we get relegated robo's out robo is out if we're relegated 100%. I'm not about to stay in League One for freaking four seasons, having the likes of Jack Rodoni, Ayuba uh, Sal, you know, uh, coming up. And because, um, like I said before, football is not a type of sport, unfortunately, where you can have one team, several players play for that club throughout their careers. It's, it's just not. It, football's a business game. Football's a wage game. It's a business game. It's a transfer game. Most players usually only stay there for l four years or less. They usually don't stay to the, unless they have this passion for the club, this diehard desire to play for the badge. It's not going to happen. We're not going to see Rodoni and Asal two, three years from now, probably. So if Robins, if we get demoted, Robin, Robbo's out, plain and simple. If we stay in League One, maybe Robbo for a few games in the beginning of the season, then sack him or sack him after the season. I don't know. But if we if we get relegated, 100% Robbo out. Kev Taylor, love Mark to bits, but enough's enough now. And then, uh, you know, some people are saying, I think he must go. Decent bloke. Uh, lose to Jills and Donnie, then we're in real trouble, of course. Uh, Alan Boyce, who uh, has subscribed to me as of late. Alan Boyce, keep Robbo. The team, we're missing most of our best players, which is a good point. Uh, the defense have no excuses today. Lee Brown has been a complete disaster since wearing the shirt. I would have to agree. Not every game but he's been very intermittent one game he plays okay another game he's woeful charlton charlton woeful today woeful i will judge the coaching team after the second half of the season if it's league one or two knee jerk sackings don't work that's true knee jerk sackings won't work i think keeping robinson until the rest of the season is fine if we get like i said if we get relegated to league two then yeah honestly you could say that mark robin having mark robinson on the side even when we're in league 2 could work because we're going to have a depleted but even more depleted budget than this season and mark robinson's long term outlook might have more weight but still i, I just considering that like i said football's a business type of game how much are you really going to guarantee that these players are going to stay especially if we get demoted like the jack Rodonis, the ubisofts are you really going to guarantee that they're going to stay in league 2 you know, all of this talk about, you know, developing players and we're developing them to go to bigger and better teams. Football's a business game. I'm sorry. If he gets demoted to League 2, Robbo's out. I'm sorry. But I think it's a good point for Malin. Keep him for right now. Uh, knee, -jerk, uh, knee jerk sacking will not work. Tom Davies. It's the first time I've ever thought of it. But I do think we are on our way into League 2 this season. Our squad just isn't good enough. Let's face it. Most of our loan players haven't played a prof I, I gotta say our loan signings have, the loan transfers have been no. Uh, we have a striker on loan who's currently only scored two goals in one year. Recruitment has really let us down. Heads have dropped now. Fans and players, in my opinion, there's no point in sacking Robbo. He's a good manager. Just He's just not got a lot of, to work with. He's tried his best. The boys listen, and they've slowly faded over time. Well, that's a very depressing way to put it. Mark Robinson has certainly tried his best with what he, ha what he has, but his outlook has some glaring flaws to it. And um, that's not to say that it's not for the one of trying. I'm sure Robbo, 
He's a great guy and he has tried his best, but his outlook hasn't been working. Thank you guys for watching.